Hello everyone! Welcome to It's Crochet O'Clock. My name is Stephanie and we do this live stitch gathering almost every Monday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome! If this is your first time ever participating in a live chat on YouTube, please remember that you have to be logged into your YouTube channel in order to, or your YouTube account rather, in order to participate in the live chat. Otherwise, it will not let you comment and chit chat with everybody else that is here. While you're at it, click the drop down button. It normally says top chat. It needs to be set on live chat. If it's set to top chat, then it's going to filter out some of the comments that are made. It's completely random. There is no rhyme or reason to it. And I may comment on something and you'll be lost in the sauce because you didn't see that. So make sure that you're clicked on live chat instead of top chat. And one more disclaimer before we get into it this evening. We have what's known as the Three Musketeers here at It's Crochet O'Clock. They are locals. They are not trolls. They just like to have a lot of fun. And if you say something and a pun can be made out of it, one of those three is going to jump on it. And that is Freaky, Anthony, and Sue. Those are the Three Musketeers. They're troublemakers, but we love them just the same. And then we have a couple other folks who are vying for the D'Artagnan position. So... Don't take anything personally. It's all in good fun. We like to have fun around here. <laughs> Hello! Oh, there's so many people popping into chat. I'm so excited. I have something super, super awesome to talk with you guys about, but I'm going to wait just a little bit because YouTube sometimes sends out its notifications and waves. And if I start talking about it too soon, then folks are going to start coming in and they would have missed it. And I don't want to do that. So we're going to wait just a little bit, just a little bit to talk about the, the exciting news. Sue says I'm innocent. John is guilty. Both of you guys are guilty. You, you, you both are. Let me flip this around so you guys can see what I'm working on. Ooh. Well, there went my notification for the live being on. Oh, Kirby is here on time. Hello, Kirby. Welcome. Anthony, I didn't do anything yet. That that is the yet is is what's going on. And D is here. Welcome back, Miss D. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Last week you got to show off your new leggings what four times? I know, right? <laughs> Hello to everyone just coming in. Welcome. Find a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Man, you've been throwing that BFF title out willy-nilly. No, no. I have a Kiwi bestie, and then, then I have my BFF. Emma's, Emma's always my BFF. <laughs> Sue said, hi, Anthony. Speaking of the goofy, of, of the guilty ones. Yet. Nobody has done anything yet. Sue is so innocent. Look at Joe trying to take up for Sue. Hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Did you guys have a good week? I had a good week. Judy said, I'm here and I'm excited to see what you're working on. I am working on Christmas gifts. That is what I am working on. Your hair is so pretty. Great to see you. Thank you, Josie. Thank you so much. Um, hi, Stephanie and everyone getting down to 42 degrees this evening. I'm chilly here in Kokomo, Indiana. It's getting down pretty chilly here. It's um, not unbearable, uncomfortable yet. But it, it is getting just a little bit chilly. Just a little bit. Oh, as I said, I'm working on Christmas gifts, and um, it's always great. All of the parents here of older children will completely understand when, um, when you get that phone call and you hear, Mom, I'm changing the theme of my kitchen. I'm changing the decor. I have decided on this instead of this. Okay, all right, fine then. We're going with a beach theme. Fine. So, 
off I go to the beachy colors. <laughs> oh, Sue said, darn it, phone call. Kathy is here listening to the ads. So is Leela, John. Ah, uh, Julie said that she got her Tumblr in the mail today. You know, it's crazy, Julie, that it made it. I'm one state over from you. Just one. It made it. Where Where did the other one go? One went to Pensacola. And I forget where the other two went. But, I mean, honestly, you're in the next state over. Why are you the last one to get yours? <laughs> What pattern is that? This is just um, front post trebles that I'm staggering. That's all it is. Which makes me think of Beach Boys in the movie Cocktail Kokomo. Yeah, it sure does. Let me tell you, the keys were a huge disappointment for me. Oh. Yarn Dragon said, I love this color. This color is Watershed. This is um, Eco Cotton because it's going to be used in the kitchen. So it's Eco Cotton, and this is probably going to end up being a hand towel. And I was wanting to work on a dishcloth that I've been working on, but I noticed because I was just sitting here as the, the time was ticking down to be able to go live with you guys, and I was working on it a little bit more, and the camera hated it but I also have been working on a a dishcloth here see it's already going in and out of focus it doesn't like all of the detail but the thing that I love about doing this is that it looks the same on both sides the exact same on both sides I love it and it's stretchy love it but let me get that out before the camera starts going crazy and that was the color squirrel for the sand oh it's not the alpine stitch see Kim is trying to make me go off the ledge we ain't even 10 minutes into this yet and and she is trying to make me jump off the ledge I will not be baited Kim I will not naughty Hello, Christina. Slip stitch in the back loop. Yes, ma'am. That's what that is. Slip stitch in the back loop all the way through. That is exactly what that is. Yep, yep. Oh. Mercy. Oh, I just need to. Come on. You know if you knitted, you could do those rib stitch washcloths super fast. Yes, but I do not knit. I didn't even start it. Yes, you did, Kim. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you did. That was definitely you that time. It is not the Alpine stitch. It is just... The daggum. I can't. What was I doing? Yes, doubles. Okay. It's been a while since I picked up this one. <laughs> the Alpine is not a thing, people. It is not a thing. There is no such thing as an Alpine stitch. There is an alpine blanket that was made with post stitches, but there is no alpine stitch. Yeah, that was the right one. Oh. Hello, Carol. Welcome. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I knew that was wrong. It was just wrong here. Mercy. Um, 
Welcome one and all, and hey to all those lurkers. Yes, that's okay to lurk. It's hard to type and, and work on your project. Oh, Sally's going to go get a cuppa. Hello, Diana. What about the pineapple stitch? The pineapple stitch. Ugh. Lord. It's so weird because I, I, I just, I can't. Guys, this is a happy day. This is a happy day. <laughs> Ugh. The pineapple is one of those that I like to call a micro pattern. If you have to work over multiple rows in order to get the desired effect, then it's not a stitch. That's a pattern, like the crocodile stitch. No, that's not a stitch. That's a micro pattern. My cats are zooming around the house and it sounds like the theme song to Bonanza. <laughs> Oh. Oh, Carol said I've missed so much. The hubby is having a good day, so maybe I can stay tonight. I hope so. I hope so. Seeing you in that sweater is giving me heat stroke. Listen, it's a little bit chilly back here. It's not bad now that I've sat here in front of these lights for a little while and I am regretting my choice. But um, it's chilly here today. Popcorns are all worked in the same stitch. If you have to go over multiple rows, is what I said. You do not have to work multiple rows to fashion a popcorn. But you do have to work over multiple rows to create a crocodile stitch, or to create a pineapple stitch, or a waffle stitch. Those are micro patterns. Can I take a guess your pattern is ready? No, my pattern is not ready. It is not ready. We still have a few testers that are still out there um, doing their thing. We, I still have to film the border. I have finished weaving in all of my ends on my filming one, which is not there. I think, it, yeah, it, it's down in my bag down there. So I still have to film the border and then weave in those ends and then block it. <sighs> I'm actually going to film a tutorial when I block it because I think that it's going to be, I didn't think about it when I was blocking this one that's behind me, but it's a very good example of how to use blocking wires. So I'm going to take that opportunity and I am going to film a tutorial on using blocking wires too. I wish my projects looked new when I finished them like other crafters stuff being all perfect, but mine looks fuzzy. What do you mean fuzzy? What do you mean fuzzy, Kirby? I can't help you because I do not understand. You will have to be more specific. It was actually chilly here today. It didn't go to 110, right? I, um, let me see, what is it? It's 61 degrees outside right now, which isn't bad, but it's supposed to get down to 43 tonight, and then tomorrow, 79. <laughs> I'd love to see the blocking wires. Yes, yes, there is a, there is a couple, but I knew that you said that you had never... Um, use them before Julie so I was actually thinking about you when I decided that I needed to to film that that video
Hello, Beverly. Double treble, double treble. Yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. Mindless crochet, but listen, it um, it it's soothing for my soul. Oh yikes! I don't have blocking wires. Will that be an issue? No, no. You can still block it. However, it is that that you prefer to block things. I block things in many different ways. Sometimes I pin them out by hand. Now that I've gotten my new fancy blocking board, I like to use that. But for bigger objects that I want a straight edge on without having to pin a gazillion different times, I like using blocking wires because blocking wires take the guesswork out of it. So that's why I like to use blocking wires, but it's not it is not a requirement. You'll just have to eyeball whenever you're blocking. Dum, 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 dum. Wanda's here, Miss Wanda. She said, I'm lurking, I'm heading to Georgia. All right then, head on over to Georgia. Oh, you know what I did? No, that was right. Yeah. Pretty sure that was right. Who knows? Honestly. Who knows? With me nowadays. This is what happens to me when I put down a project. I'm like, wait, what was I doing? These are the blocking wires I use and they never stay bent. Always go back to being straight. I use the nitpick um, blocking wires. Lip. I think I spend just as much time weaving the wire through the edge as I would have pinning. Well, my issue is is that I can't do straight edges with anything. I cannot do straight edges. So for me, it it takes me a lot more time because yeah, I can pin it all out, but then I'll stand up and I'll look at it and it'll be all crazy wonky. So then I have to go back and I have to adjust and then I have to stand up and look at it, and then it's still not right, and then I have to adjust. And it's just a pain in the butt. So when I use the blocking wires, it takes that away from me. So it's just for my nerves, I like using the blocking wires on projects like that. Everybody has their own preference, so it'll just be, you know, just a little video on how I do it. Not saying that there's a right or a wrong way, or that you have to do this or you have to do that. It's just another way to do it. We're about 20 minutes in, almost 20 minutes in. I'm trying to decide if I should show all of you guys at 20 minutes or if I should wait until 30 minutes in. But I'm so excited and I'm so happy for my friend. Okay, when I get to the end of this row. I'll show it, because I can't wait any longer. I just can't. And I love them so much. Are you guys excited? I'm so excited. Super excited. Dum -da dum 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 dum.
Now I remember why I stopped doing this. It was very tedious. I was beginning to think chat froze. No, nope, it's just everybody all at once. I've decided to be quiet. Hello, Veronica. Welcome. Get, get, come on, get in there. Thank you. Mesmerized by the crochet. Yeah. Look how stretchy. Stretchy. Ooh. <laughs> how does the wires work versus the pins? The wires go in, you weave it in and out of your stitches, and then you pin up the wires so it keeps everything straight. So, all right, so you guys, I can't take it anymore. I just, I can't, I have to tell you, okay? Is everybody ready? You, a bunch of you have probably already seen it because you follow my BFF, my BFF Emma over at Pippin Poppycock. Today released her first ever ebook. And I am so incredibly happy. She put a ton of work into it. And it consumed her for, for quite some time. But she is, she is finished with it. She has launched it today. And it is just the cutest, <laughs> the cutest little things ever. It's a total of eight patterns in her ebook. And she made gnomes, you guys. Seasonal gnomes look will you look at those gnomes are they not the most adorable things you have ever ever seen Kim just put a link into chat to the main Pippin Poppycock um, website and then Ida just put in a the same link <laughs> <laughs> I think um, Kim also just put in a link, that link that says buy it, right click. That right click is so you don't end up leaving us. But that will take you over to Lovecrafts and you can purchase it. And the this is, um, oh, it just left me. Why did it just, Bumble and Bram, Bram, Bumble and Bramble. I don't know why it just left me like that. Clover and Bramble. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Bumble and Bramble, but it's not. Their names are Clover and Bramble, okay? And they're, she separated it out into four different seasons, okay? The gnomes themselves are made in cotton. The hair and the beards are made from acrylic that you brush out with an animal brush. And you have to use acrylic yarn in order to get the desired effect because cotton is not going to fluff out like this, okay? So this is the spring. Look at them, you guys. I can't. I can't. And she's got all kinds of links for, you know, cutesy wootsy little things that you can put on their hats. I just, I can't with how cute these guys are, okay? This one is, this. these two patterns right here are for spring. And then, you guys, look at summer. Look at their little flip and floppums. Look. And the pattern for the wheel and the anchor on the hats, you guys. Look at them. I love them so much. They're so stinking cute. Look at Autumn. Look at Autumn. And it's kind of dark, so you can't really see, but oh, the detail. 
And I know that some of you guys, some of you guys who have been working on Russell's patterns are going to go, oh no puffs. But listen, look at that hat. Is that not the most adorable thing ever? Just, just, ever. I can't. Are you guys ready for winter? You're not ready for the cuteness. I know that you're not ready for the cuteness, but I'm going to hit you with it anyways because you got to see it. Seriously. <laughs> I cannot. Little snowflake. Little buttons. Buttons. There's little buttons. Ugh. Are they not the most adorable things that you have ever, ever seen? Like, honestly, I want them all over my house. All over my house. I can't. I cannot with the adorableness that is going on here. I just can't. So there's eight different patterns for them, walking you through all of the good stuff. There's beautiful photos in the ebook. The ebook is 25 pages. It's a digital download. So, um, and, and it's only $4.99, you guys. $4.99. I already went and got my own. I'm going to show you the picture again of them all now that you know which seasons are which show you the picture of them all are those like i'm so so happy for emma she did so well with these they are just so adorable and lindsay said i don't know if the photo shows it well but the male gnome has a plaid top for fall so that would be the one that is right in between the, the the winter with the snowflake on her hat and then the autumn with the leaves on her hat. You can see a little bit of it in this photo. Let me flip back over to the fall one. Yeah, you can't see it very much because he's it, it, it's hidden on his arms. But you can see that there's two different colors there. But it's just absolutely beautiful absolutely gorgeous I love them so 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 much <laughs> you guys <sighs> and Sherry Mary Kay Cafe said what's the gorgeous blue lacy thing behind you that's actually cobblestone it's gray and that is my pattern that's going to be released soon-ish. Ish. We're still working on it. So soon-ish, it's going to be released. Somebody else just asked about it. There you go. It's coming soon-ish. Please put the link. There you go. Ida just popped in the link for the, the main Pip and Poppycock website where you can go and you can read more information about it. Make sure you're right clicking because if you just click on the link then it's going to take you away from us. And we don't want that. <sighs> she also has it for sale on, on Etsy. But um, I happen to prefer Lovecrafts so that's why I, I like to promote Lovecrafts. But if you're an Etsy person, it's also on Etsy as well. <sighs> Is it a shawl or a blanket? It's a shawl behind me. Yes, it's a shawl. I can show you the unblocked one that is almost finished that I've been using for the tutorials because I'm filming the tutorials because Lord knows I can't release a pattern without putting out video tutorials for it 
So behind me, that is cobblestone. And this is, wait, 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 this is the front. This is a venturine. I still have the border to put on it. But this is what it looks like. So pretty. So very, very, very pretty. And that will be coming soonish. Soonish. But it's very customizable. So if you wanted to um, make a bedspread out of it, you absolutely could if you wanted to. Whew. I expect to see the internet flooded with clover and brambles. I want to see everybody's clover and brambles. I'm so excited about it. Thank you, Julie. I'm very, very proud of it. I am. I'm incredibly proud of it. Thank you, Azalea. I love azaleas, by the way. If I ever told you guys that? I love azaleas. My nanny, when I was growing up, had azalea bushes. Huge, massive azalea bushes all through her yard. And when I was little, they were even bigger. It was always like going to, in my mind... So there was lots of trees on the property at that time. As I got older, they took them down one by one. But it was always like going to my own little fantasy garden. There were so many azalea bushes everywhere, and she loved them so much. Thank you, M and Sherry. I appreciate that. We're working on it. It's just a process. <laughs> it's a process. A couple of the testers have finished. There's still a couple other testers that are out there that are that are working on it. I have some corrections to be made because I can never put anything out without errors on it. That's why we put things through testing. And like I said, I still have to finish filming the tutorials for it. Yeah. But the patrons will get it first. Patrons always get my videos and my patterns. They get it a week before everybody else does. So it will be at least two weeks. Probably closer to three if I'm being honest. Julie said, I love the yarn color you're using now. Watershed looks stunning in person, too. Yes, it does. Watershed is definitely... I always have such issues choosing favorite colors. I have a bunch of them. But Watershed is definitely, you know, one of them. John said, woohoo. Oh, and since I have Julie here, Julie, you remember how disappointed you were when I got help for inventory and you couldn't watch me count yarn anymore? <laughs> Good news. Inventory is next Sunday. And and the behind the scenes level and, and above will get to participate. I won't be participating, but I will turn on the Zoom and I will let you guys do your thing in and out, as you will, while we are doing inventory. And then Sunday, I also have to button up and zip up all of the stuff for Snowball Express. So I will be vacuum sealing all of the Snowball Express blankets, all of that good stuff. I'm wondering what in Sam Hill is going to go wrong because it always does. 
I'm just preparing myself for the inevitable. <sighs> Julie was very bummed when I got help for inventory because not everybody is is um, open to being on camera. So Julie was very bummed because she likes to watch me count yarn. Why? I don't know. But there's a couple of them in there that just love to watch me count the yarn. <laughs> to me, I'm like, Ooh, it's yarn. I'm counting yarn. But they like to watch. So I hope that makes you happy, Julie. Why did I decide on this? I don't know why. I do not know why I decided on this. Because I'm crazy, clearly. Um, let's see, what have I been watching in TV? I restarted um, all of Call the Midwife. I started back at season one, episode one. Because I realized that I've never rewatched all of them before. So it's kind of like I'm watching everything because it's been a really long time. It's been a really long time since I've watched the beginning episodes. So it's kind of like I'm watching it all again for the same time. Kim said, I have given up not being comfortable on camera. Well, I'm, I'm glad we have a spanner cam and mic now. <laughs> Good. We get to see the real Stephanie. Yeah, or as John puts it for, for the patrons, we pay to see Stephanie in her pajamas. Because I literally show up to do inventory in my pajamas. <laughs> Listen, we take, we take all of the comfort we can when we can, okay? Well, everybody's saying that they, they like Call the Midwife. I really do like Call the Midwife. I think I'm up in... I'm, I'm not... I can't remember what episode I'm at now. Is there a specific level of Patreon that you need to be to get the pattern and video early, or is it all levels? Nope. Um, releases of patterns and early release is $5 and, and above. And as we all know, I don't always release, I don't release patterns every month, but that's the level that you have to be at to get the early access. Ruth said, I'm watching The Warrior Nun. I watched that and I did not think that I was going to enjoy it and I actually did. I really, really, really enjoyed The Warrior Nun. Spanner cam doesn't have a fancy frame though. Uh oh. Gotta get on that, Kim. My book club is reading Call the Midwife right now. Oh, I bet you that's fun. I don't have time to read anything. I bought the um I bought the audiobooks for a discovery of witches because I loved the TV show so much. That first season, I have watched it, I know, six or seven times. I loved it so much. But I, I couldn't take it, and I wanted to know what had happened. And when I was reading through, you know, the the groups on Facebook and, and what people were saying about it, you know, sometimes whenever things are books and they translate them over to TV or in the movie, they either do a really good job or they don't do a good job because they have to cut things out. And people were saying that they cut a lot out of A Discovery of Witches. Like an obscene amount of things they cut out from the books. So I bought all of the books, audiobooks, because I figured I could listen to them. While I was at work or while I was crocheting, I could listen to them. Well... The problem is, is I wanted to listen to the whole first book so I could catch myself up on the things that I missed that they didn't put into the TV series. I ain't even gotten halfway through that book, y'all. I have not. 
And I have all three of them. I've gotten into audiobooks because I can crochet and listen to my book at the same time. See, I tried it and 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 it's just not for me. It really isn't. Unfortunately, because I have to count and I have to write things down because most of the time whenever I'm crocheting, I'm also designing something as well. So my brain is too focused on what I'm doing to be able to enjoy it, if that makes any sense. Oh, rewatching the Gilmore Girls. Isn't the Gilmore Girl Girls just a happy little thing? I fought the Gilmore Girls for a really long time. In fact, the entire time it was still going on television, I refused to watch it. And then I got to a point where I was out of things to watch. And a friend of mine loves the Gilmore Girls. Loves the Gilmore Girls. And I think it was right at the time that Netflix released their continuation episode of it. So it was popping up on my Netflix. So I just watched the whole thing and I was so pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed the Gilmore Girls. There was drama, but it was, you know, normal kinds of, of drama and, and things that happen. It wasn't crazy, overly dramatic. I just really enjoyed it. And and I kind of I kind of wish that it hadn't have ended. I definitely use audiobooks while crocheting pretty much for anything. I know lots of people say that they that they do. I just I can't. I just can't do it. And I think part of the problem is is I'm so invested in that story. I love the story of a discovery of witches because it's so different than the normal take on all of those supernatural beings. It, it, it's so different. I love it so much. So I'm so invested in it that my brain, I don't want to, um, I don't want to split my time between it. I want to give it my full attention and get completely wrapped up because, because I'm obsessive. That's what I do. They want to get completely immersed in everything and I can't do that if I'm crocheting on something and I, I'm the same way with everything like on Grey's Anatomy I don't have cable but I have all kinds of sub subscription services so I love Grey's Anatomy I've been watching Grey's Anatomy from day one but every time there's a new episode Grey's comes on on Thursday I watch it Friday night on Hulu and I don't do anything else I turn off my phone I may eat dinner um, but I don't crochet, I don't do anything for that whole first episode. Well, my first viewing of the episode because I want to pay attention. I don't want to miss anything. So whenever I'm crocheting and I'm watching things, normally that's when I re-binge things like Downton Abbey. I know I've watched that whole thing, the whole series, at least a dozen times. I love it so much. But I've gotten to the point where um, I can just listen and I know what's happening in, in the scene and I still enjoy it. But if I have to break my focus away from it to write something down or to count stitches or measure something, something like that, it, I'm, I'm not going to miss anything, if that makes any sense. Have you watched The Last Tango in Halifax? It's pretty much like Call the Midwife. No, I've never even heard of it. Never even heard of it. I 
I went to audio when I started using when I started having vision issues. I used to read 30 plus books a month and so I miss reading, but now I can still read without the eye fatigue. Oh, bless your heart. That um that happened to my mother. My mother is an avid reader. She has been her entire life. She has more books than she has anything else. I mean, it, it, it's obscene. It really is. But she had an issue, um, gosh, about 11, no, gosh, 16 years ago, she had an issue where she would have spells where she would lose her vision. And it was completely random, and they couldn't figure out what it was that was causing it. And it took a really long time for them to figure out what it was. But during that time, you know, all of the doctors kept saying, this is it, this is it, this is it. You're putting too much strain. One of the things that they said was that she was putting too much strain on her eyes um, by reading as much as she did. So they told her that she could not read anymore. And it was absolutely devastating to her. Turned out that um, she was actually having seizures and doctor put her on a medication and she's never had an episode ever since. So it didn't have anything to do with her books and, and her reading. So she was able to go back and, you know, pick that back up and start reading again, which was great because she was pretty unbearable when she couldn't read. I was just barely young enough to watch So Weird when it was on TV. I just discovered it's on Disney Plus and that's where I've been. Good memory. <laughs> Beautiful stitch work. Is it just double crochet and trebles in the stitch below? You must have finished your baby blanket. How did working in the ends go? Okay, so hi Sean. Um, no, the baby blanket is not finished. Working in the ends went fine, all 180 of them. Yeah, we did that. It's um, blocking behind me, and I think it's going to end up being a car carrier blanket versus a baby blanket size because it's. Um, I was trying to give it more size to it by adding a very thick border and it won't stop rippling and I pulled it out several times added stitches took away stitches because normally it's too many stitches whenever it, it, it's wavy it's normally too many stitches and I got to the point where I could not um, take any more stitches out because then there would be gaps going around and I've gotten it to the point where I can, I've blocked it out straight, but I, I know that if I go to go, you know, give it any more, then it's going to be an issue. So that's where the baby blanket is. This is coming back around on the wrong side of the work. I do single crochets and then here it's just treble a front post treble around the stitch. You, you can't really tell here because my camera is going kind of crazy. It does not like it when there's a whole lot of pattern in here, but you alternate between double crochet and front post trebles one row below. And when you do that, it creates a little window, if, if that makes sense. So the next time you come back over like this row, I started with a front post treble and once I work my way back around I will start with a double there and then it will be a front post treble because I need to get it into that little that little window that it's created. I thought it was 11 billion ends. It was a lot of ends, okay? It was a lot of ends. And why do I feel like I am off a stitch? I have no idea why. I, 
I'm gonna put this in here, but I feel like I'm going to regret this. I mean, I can feel the frog coming on. Truly and honestly, I can. But I don't think so. Hang on, let me look. It's the problem with doing things in one color, at least for me, when you do things in one color. Um, nope. Nope, I think I ended right where I was supposed to. You know what, we're just going to, we're just going to go with it. Gosh, why does that already look off to me? It shouldn't, but it looks off to me. Who knows? Who knows? Did I? No. It's right here. Come on, though. Anywho, hello. Cassie said, how much have I missed? You've missed all the things, Cassie. No, nope, you've missed about um, 52 minutes. That's okay. Right, I've got Last Tango in Halifax on my watch list. Is that on Netflix? Is it? I don't even know anything about it. It's not the Alpine Stitch. <laughs> Come on, Netflix. Um, Halifax. Last Tango. Hold on, I'm searching so I can add this. Last Tango in Halifax. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm adding it to my list. Season, how many seasons? There's three seasons already. All right. All right, you guys. We're going to see. It's on Netflix. So I have added it to my list. We will see. We will see. I don't know if I should... I don't know if I should continue watching Call the Midwife or start that. Now I have decisions. I was completely set, but now I have decisions on what I'm going to do. Should I continue watching? Three seasons. No, it's um, three seasons. They were just telling me about the TV show Last Tango in Halifax. They said that it's a lot like Call the Midwife, which I love. So I've added it to my watch list. So we will see what happens. We'll see if I can keep myself from it. I will try. I'm probably going to fail because I already just want to start watching it to see what it's about. But I am also still, I am reinvested in Call the Midwife, okay? Seriously, reinvested in, in the whole story of it. There's five seasons in Australia? Oh, man. Sorry, I wrecked your decisions. No, it's okay. Listen, I, I only restarted watching Call the Midwife. Okay, so there's two reasons. One, because I needed some calming down. And Call the Midwife is one of those shows that just calms you down. And then um, I realized that I hadn't binged it. I hadn't re-binged it. I just watched all of the episodes just the one time so it's it's really like watching a whole new show for me very easy to watch but very British hey I like British shows 
Okay, I do. Um, okay. I feel like I've gotten off the pattern. I don't think that I have, but I feel like I have. Oh well, we're just going to go with it. We are just going to go with it. Thankfully, my child was not cursed with OCD like I am. So even if I had, she won't notice. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I'll pin it out to block and see that it's absolutely atrocious and end up frogging the whole thing. Because that's how I am. Watch Tango if it's junk go back to midwife. Yeah, that's a good that's a good thing. That's a good idea. Um let's see. Oh, and announcement. Announcement, folks. Not next Monday, but the following Monday, we will not be having a live. I'm going to be taking um that entire weekend off. It's been a couple months since I have taken a complete weekend off from everything. So that would be um, Monday the 12th. We will not be here on Monday the 12th. So mark it down in your calendars. I'm giving you two weeks notice. You're, you're going to have to find ways to entertain yourself that Monday evening. The Handmaiden's Tale. You know, I couldn't get into The Handmaiden's Tale. I tried. I couldn't. Just could not. So I've never watched The Handmaid's Tale. <gasps> There's Miss Chantel. Hello, Miss Chantel. I have been watching your progress. On the queen and your queen is coming out beautifully hello Jen welcome 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 so it's been a half hour since I showed you guys the gnomes okay but we've gotten a whole lot of other folks in here since then so I'm gonna quickly go through these again Emma from Pip and Poppycock released her very first ebook today. There's eight different patterns in it. There's um, seasonal gnomes going through. They are absolutely adorable. You guys, check it out. Look at all of them. They are so adorable. Their names are Clover and Bramble. And each gnome has four different patterns for it. So there's eight total <laughs> I'm going to show you the different seasonals. This is spring, if that was not obvious to you. That is spring. Um, for those of you guys who have already heard this, I'm so, so sorry, but they, these gnomes are worked up in cotton, except for their hair and the beard. That must be in acrylic, and she's used a pet brush to brush out the acrylic yarn to make it look like hair. Look at the summer one. I still love the flip and flop -ums. They are absolutely adorable. So this is the summer um, outfits for them, or the summer gnomes, rather. And then here is autumn. I love them so, so, so much. Look at Bramble's hat. Is Bramble's hat not the most adorable thing ever? Just, just ever. And then here's the winter versions. I love them so much. Love them so, so, so much. So here's the cool thing about them. And I think that I forgot to mention this with the other one. You know, I look at these, the autumn hat. I love that hat so much. And I know that she was, that, that, that she meant to, you know, 
it be part of, of autumn, but you could also change that hat into a different color and put it on spring or or put it on a winter or or something like that. Of course, it, it, it would be a little bit different, but my point is, is they are incredibly customizable, okay? You can use all kinds of different colors. You can switch and, and flip them back and forth. There's just so, so much that that you can do with them honestly and the ebook is only four dollars and 99 cent usd so it's awesome it's 25 pages the ebook is there's all kinds of information in it she's got beautiful photos in there that i'm not going to show you I have purchased the ebook, of course I have. So I have it. I've seen all of the photos that are inside. Gorgeous photos. Not going to share them all here. Those are all the photos that, that I can share with you guys here. But it's well worth it, you guys. Well, well worth it. And they are no so. Thank you. The limbs are join as you go. So that's a that's a big plus if if you have problems in that area. Hmm. Let's see. Where is this? Ida just um Ida just posted a a link. I'm not sure what that link is. It's not the I don't think it's the link that I put into the group, but you can find it um if you go to pippinpoppycock.com. It's the top post on pippinpoppycock.com, and she sells it on Lovecrafts and on Etsy, so you can take your choice. There you go. There's the, the buy it link from, from Kim. Oh, yeah, I'm bad at putting limbs on. Well, that's a join-as-you-go type thing, so you don't have to, to worry about that. I have problems in the I've never done <laughs> um, me, 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 me. stuffies before. I'm not a big fan of them myself, but listen, I'm very, very cranky with um, not being able to find the time to make my own clover and, and bramble. I'm very cranky about that situation because I want my own clover and bramble. Oi. Oh, so many people are working the queen cow. So many people are are working it. Hey, well, hey, Freaky, you missed all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. Ami Gurumi, I'm horrible at saying that. Listen, my tongue is southern. Okay, it just doesn't want to say those big old fancy words. Yay, my class just finished. I'm glad I managed to catch the live. Welcome! What are you making now if you haven't stated that a million times by now? I'm making a um, a kitchen towel is what I am making. Dum dum dum. Need some frizzy black yarn for a Stephanie Clover. <gasps> well, I mean, listen, I'll deal. Say impotent orange vehicle. Because the Aussies, like, they like to, they, they giggle at my, my southern words. Although I still don't get what's so funny like I get the whole impotent thing I get that but I still don't get orange and vehicle what I still don't get that but okay my ears did not ring at all <laughs> freaky was out gallivanting causing problems somewhere doing something naughty as always I mean, let's be honest, it's freaky. 
So anywho, this is going to be a dish towel because my child has decided that everything must be um, beach themed in the kitchen. And I was working on a dishcloth for her, but the camera did not like such small stitches and so many of them, so it will not stay in focus. So that's what I really wanted to work on and what my brain is, is wrapped up in right now. But this is this is the dishcloth that that I'm working on. See, it's already starting to go crazy. It doesn't like all of that detail, but the thing that I love the most about this is it looks the exact same on either side, and that makes me so happy. I cannot express how happy it makes me. I love it. <laughs> it's tedious. It takes a long time to build it up because it's slip stitches, but I love the thickness of it. I love that it, it's very squishy, it's um, very stretchy, and it looks the same, the exact same on both sides. I love it. Because we don't say the H in, you say Vickle? Somebody's going to have to say that for me. I mean, I... The next time I go into an Aussie Zoom meeting, y'all are going to have to say that word for me because I just don't understand. It's not like the back of trebles when you turn granny squares. No, no, it's not. Well, we say car too, and we say truck, and we say pickup, and then whenever I'm feeling overly sassy, a mundane means of locomotion. We call it all kinds of things. <laughs> hey Gabby! Vehicle? 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 I don't know. I don't know. Oh, the Aussies poke fun at me. Automobile. There you go. Automobile. Automobile. Vericle. Y'all make me crazy. All of y'all make me crazy. Impotent orange vehicle. Orange, if you will. If you want to be fancy. Orange. <laughs> Veer cool. My nan says Veer cow. I, I, you know, sometimes I think you guys just make up things so you can sit there on the other side of this, this screen and laugh at me trying to pronounce them. Do you say film or film? As in like a film that you watch? or film that gets developed into photographs? Film? I say the H. I didn't even know that people didn't ever say the H in the word vehicle. I didn't even know that that was a thing. Vickle. That didn't even sound right. Vehicle. Hmm. We pronounce the H when we say vehicular. <clears throat> I, 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 but not vehicle. The Aussies like to poke fun at me, is what it is. For all of you new folks that have no idea what in Sam Hill is going on, that's, that's the Aussies that just like to hear me say specific words. The word I get caught up on is length. Length?
All right, y'all are just, I'm stopping with the phonetics. Y'all are just getting crazy now. Mercy. Kim, do you want me to play that? Mine comes out vehicle, no H. Vehicle. Oh! Vehicle. Okay, now I'm smelling what you guys are stepping in. Now I understand. As someone who speaks French as a first language, this is confusing me. It makes me doubt my English pronunciation. Listen, don't go by me, okay? I'm Southern. Don't go by me. Some of the words that come out of my mouth, I mean, it, 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 it's just how it is. All right, let me see what Kim's got going on here. We say vehicle. Vehicle. Did I do it right? Vehicle? Vehicle? Vehicle. I'll bet everyone is, is their same vehicle right now. I I didn't even know, honest to goodness, I didn't even know that it wasn't a thing to to pronounce the H. Hmm. But now we know, and knowing is half the battle. G I Joe, but I'm still gonna say vehicle. <laughs> Cause I can't can't change. Or won't, rather. But now I get it. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much. Okay. Is Leanne even here? Leanne likes orange. She puts the hick in vehicle. Ugh! Maybe just a little bit. Just a little bit. As long as you don't pronounce the L in salmon, you're fine. Listen, it's 2020. I mean, with all of the mess that's going on with the word right now, or with the world, we all might as well just start pronouncing the L in salmon. With the way that the world's going, honestly. So is it proper without the H sound? I don't know. Oh, Leanne's looking after her grandkids, okay. Wait, you don't pronounce the L in... No, who pronounces the L in salmon? Who does that? The L is silent. It's not salmon. It's salmon. Are you French folks saying salmon? <laughs> oh, man. I have to wait. I hate this delay sometimes. How about the word herb? Herb. Herb, herb. Herb's the word. Has my life been a lie? Yes, Anne. Your life has been a lie if you've been pronouncing it salmon. It's salmon. <laughs> Some speakers of American Eng English pronounce the H, but the vast majority keep the H silent and consider the pronunciation with H unnatural. <gasps> oh. Okay. My coworker pronounces the L in salmon and we and we keep telling her to stop it. She refuses. <sighs> I 
we pronounce the H in herb. My hubby and I argue over iron. He says it's like iron, and I say iron. We are a messy language. You know, you are up by that area. My dad and I have two sisters and a brother and an aunt that are still up in the Pittsburgh area. Let me tell you, Pittsburghese is a whole other a whole other universe within itself. Everything is iron. <laughs> iron city beer. Yeah, it's um it it it's it's different. Pittsburghese is completely different. Dictionary.com lists the no H version of the pronunciation before the other one as a sometimes. Okay, so I'm odd. I'm odd. <laughs> Terry said to t for Holly to tell her that she's creating a hostile work environment, right? Because, I mean, that's fighting words. If you're pronouncing the L in salmon, you're just, you're, you're looking to make, to, to drive somebody off of a cliff. I mean, there is no other explanation for it. I'm guessing we get a mix of all accents, but for like specific words, so I'm pretty sure it's understandable, but a mess at the same time. <laughs> how do you say oregano? Oregano. That's how I say it. If English, if you get your point across, it's great. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, it took a really, really long time for me to be okay with learnt. Learnt. Took me a really long time. What about yoke? Do you pronounce the L? No, I don't. Yoke. Yoke. Not odd, just southern. Well, I am who I am, okay? The L in salmon, the name of the fish, is not pronounced. It has to do with the way the word evolved through different languages. However, there is a surname, salmon, in which the L is pronounced. Freaky. I'm not that close to Pittsburgh to claim it as my problem. I'm about right smack in the middle of the state. Oh, okay. Well, fine. Wash or worsh. I can't handle that worsh business. I can't handle a worsh. I don't understand. We're going to wash the laundry. We're going to wash the baby. I, I, I can't do that. And I can't handle rough either. Instead of a roof, I can't handle it. Oh... My niece is confused as to why a crochet live stream is teaching phonetics. Well, we're not really teaching phonetics. We're just talking, we're, we're an international group here, so we all say things differently. And most of the time, niece, they're all just trying to get me to say words so they can laugh at me. They're mocking me. That's what it is. Worsh is evil. Yes, it is. So is Minnesota soda versus pop, casserole versus hot dish. I didn't even know that a casserole had any other name except for a casserole. My favorite around here is crick as in creek. <sighs> Doesn't that just sound so country? I'm going to go down to the crick. I don't I don't know. I was in Scouts with a kid from PA and he said Warsh and we used to joke that he took the R's we don't use and put them into words where they don't belong.
There's so many words. I get a crick in my neck. Yeah, you get a crick in your neck, but you don't go down to the crick to go fishing. You go down to the creek to go fishing. I'm trying to think a word that I know is country that I still say. Oh, listen, my ex. I was with a firefighter for many years with a firefighter who had been a firefighter for years and years and years, right? <laughs> and I don't know why, but in the South... Most people refer to diabetes as the sugar. <laughs> they just do. You got problems with your sugar. Everybody knows that you're talking about diabetes. They, they just do. It's the sugar. The sugar. That's what the problem is. And I will, he must have been having a bad day or, or, or something was, was killing him. But, um, we were driving down the road. I will never forget it. We were driving down the road and it was such a beautiful day. And he was telling me about somebody that worked with him. And, and I was, cause you know, diabetes, getting the diagnosis of diabetes is never a good thing, right? Oh, my aunt Jean Ann is here. Hello. I love you. It's never a good thing, right? So I, I was, I was so taken back and I was so sad and I was like, oh, the sugar, are they sure? He was like, will you stop calling it that? That is the most uneducated thing to say ever. I don't, the people from the island, and that's another thing that's funny because I come from a place that's nothing but a bunch of islands connected with bridges. But there's two very big, well, there's three very big islands, but whenever somebody says the island in that way, they're talking about one specific island and it's a large population of people that don't act like they have had any education at all. And he was just lost his mind because I was like, oh, the sugar, are they sure? <laughs> and I still, to this day, whenever I talk about diabetes, it's the sugar. It's not, it's not the, yeah. Oh, see, there's aunt and then there's aunt. Me, I say aunt instead of aunt. I have another aunt who always uses the word aunt instead of aunt. So it turned me off of, of the pronunciation of aunt because just to me, it just seems like you're trying to be fancier than what you are. <laughs> Oh, I just heard my heater kick on. We must have dropped a couple more degrees. The sugar is like folks around here that get all the chicken pops. <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's horrible, but I can't help it. We have to call it diabetes. No, it, it's the sugar. It's always going to be the sugar. Period. Dance and dance. Will you dance with me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all listen, I come from upbringing where I thought that Grey Poupon was the most fanciest thing ever. Okay? <laughs> Those that say my heart attacked me. Yeah. Dance has me thinking that cone hat on the kid in the corner. I don't know what's good. I don't know what that's about. I don't want to delve into it further. It's freaky. There's no telling what's down that rabbit hole. I'm not falling for it. See, what are some other words? Man, Leanne is missing a conversation. I'm sure she will be. She'll watch the replay, though, whenever she can. 
in Spanish they say the sugar too. Do they? I actually, Auntie. The commercials told us that Grey Poupon was the fanciest thing ever. Listen, it was. And do you remember that Briar's um, ice cream cake thing that was all the different layers? I just saw a meme about it on Facebook. And they... It said something like it was the fanciest thing ever when I was little. I felt that. I felt that. <sighs> the things. Listen, did I tell you guys the whole reason that I eat? No, I think I told the patrons. My Uncle Roger, who is married to my Aunt Jean Ann, okay? I was very little and I lived with my Uncle Roger and my Aunt Jean Ann. And I remember in the house, Amy would be on one side, it would be me, and then it would be my Aunt Jean Ann, and my Uncle Roger would sit at the end of the bar. And we would eat, and the kitchen would be in front of us, the living room was behind us, and he would dip his french fries into mayonnaise. And I thought that it was the nastiest thing ever and I used to always wrinkle my nose at him and say that that was gross and then he said this is how they eat their french fries in Germany so then little six or seven year old Stephanie in her mind just knew that that was the fanciest thing ever because it was foreign okay and it wasn't that I really liked the taste of mayonnaise and french fries together but I was going to do it because it was fancy and it was foreign and therefore I was fancy because I was doing it and still to this day I eat mayonnaise on my french fries because now french fries just don't taste right without it <laughs> that's the whole story of why I eat mayonnaise on my french fries it's all because my uncle Roger said this is how they eat them in Germany <laughs> My mom just asked me why I keep saying words in different ways, trying to figure out which one is right and everything. Oh, sorry for everybody who's getting questioned. Fig Newtons. It's not a cookie. It's fruit and cake. It's definitely a cookie. It's a cookie. Fig Newtons are a cookie. I like tartar sauce for my french fries. Oh, all right then. I'm fine with the spelling, it's the pronunciation that still feels uncomfortable with at times. It happens. Tartar sauce is used on fish in most places, Freaky. It's just that Terry's a little bit odd, but that's okay. But she will not eat eggplant. No, you cannot pay me to eat eggplant. Shant. Won't. Shant! Mm -mm. I love fresh hot french fries and peanut butter. Okay, Kirby. That's one that I have never heard of. Malt vinegar and salt on my fries, please. I do like me some malt vinegar. And I do love me some Tim Tams. Tim Tams came into play because Kim said something about Tim Tams. No, Kim, I'm not going to say that word. We're not talking about it. I can't pay her to eat tripe. No, I'm not going to eat tripe. Eggplant tastes like dirt. Why would you eat dirt on purpose? I don't even remember what it tastes like, to be honest with you. I just know that me and Amy would sit at that bar for what seemed like forever. Forever. Because neither one of us liked eggplant. Forever we would sit there. Because we were not going to eat it. I dislike eggplant. Ugh. I'm sensing a bit of deja vu about the french fries topic. Okay. All right. Sorry. 
I couldn't remember if it was you guys or the patrons. Been spending a lot of time in Zoom on, with the patrons. White gravy on fries. Listen, y'all, for those of you who know how to make sausage gravy, okay? Oh, did I tell y'all about my gravy? I'm pretty sure I did. Anywho, listen, it sounds crazy, but it is the best thing ever. Hamburger topped with french fries and sausage gravy and shredded cheddar cheese. Do not knock it until you try it because it is phenomenal. And then even that there are times where I just want, without the burger, make a big old batch of french fries, make some sausage gravy, pour the sausage gravy over the top of it, and then sprinkle the cheese over, stick it under the broiler just so it can melt the cheese, and oh, it's so good, you guys. It is so, so good. Oh, I love it so much. Where, where am I going? Where am I? Oh, that's what I'm doing. Um, we do chips and gravy. Love it. It's a little bit different than than poutine. And I know I said that wrong, but poutine is just the, the gravy with the cheese curds in it and it's a different type of of cheese what do you do with it so it's like breakfast sausage you know like ground sausage you brown that up and you make sausage gravy oh somebody didn't like how i said poutine <laughs> that's okay Good night, D. It was good to see you again. Cheese curds. Yeah. I do like poutine, too. I do. But the sausage gravy thing is, is different from, from poutine. I really, really enjoy it. I do. Char grilled steaks. Who doesn't like char grilled steaks? I mean, aside from Sue here. Do we have other vegans here? Oh yeah, we have Jen. Jen Deal is um she's a vegetarian too. So she doesn't eat meat. I just looked it up. Poutine is cheese curds with french fries and gravy. This was different, just gravy on fries. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you guys ever get a wild hair and just want to try something new and you know how to make sausage gravy, you wouldn't think that sausage gravy, french fries, cheddar cheese on top of a hamburger would be good but it is it is very good and it's even good all on its own just topped like like loaded french fries only with different stuff loading it up oh it's so good so 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 good Curds and whey is cottage cheese, though. I can't imagine scooping up a solid stuff and eating that with something. No, you know, all of the poutine that I've had, that's a lot. It's big chunks. It's bigger chunks of, of cheese. It's not like cottage cheese um, tiny, and it actually doesn't taste like cottage cheese, and it does not have the texture of cottage cheese either. 
completely different texture. I'm off to start cooking my better half some lunch. Goodbye, Wampir! I'm secondhand vegetarian cows eat grass. <laughs> oh, it happens. Why do they call it curd then rather than just bits of cheese? I, you, you know, it, it's a Canadian thing, okay? I cannot answer specifically. I just know that whenever I go far enough north to be close to Canada, I know that, 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 that there's a possibility that I'm going to get it. And I get excited about it. But I cannot answer those questions for you, Kim. I do not know. My eyes are starting to cross for some reason. It's kind of curdled. No, it's not curdled. Not curdled at all. It's really just like chunks of, of cheese. But it it's all of the one that I have had, they've all been white and they're, they're like springy bites. You know, you take a bite of cottage cheese and it kind of just ki kind of like melts type thing. You know, it's very squishy, very, very soft. And while cheese curds are, are soft, they're a softer cheese, they're, they're more chewy is, is, yeah, that's, that's the word that I'm looking for. They're more chewy. So it's it they don't melt like like you would think in in the gravy. They still stay in their little chunks. John, settle down. French Canadians. It's a huge French population up by Canada. And every time I go north, the closer you get north, the better your chances are of having poutine on a menu. Because you ain't going to find that mess somewhere in Texas. It's not going to happen. Or in New Mexico. Or in South Carolina. There was never any poutine anywhere on a menu in, anywhere, in, in anything in South Carolina. I um I think it's important to note that I am not craving poutine. Now I have worked myself into a craving of sausage gravy over french fries with shredded cheddar cheese. <laughs> I'm not craving poutine because that's a completely different thing, but now I can't stop thinking about the sausage gravy thing. Um, curds are the youngest form of cheese, not aged, so springy and light taste. Yeah, springy, that's a good word, springy. I'm going to ask my neighbors to bring me some when the border opens. It doesn't, you know, like, uh, I think us Americans, whenever we think of cheese fries, we think of melted cheese. You know, like the, the melted cheddar cheese over the the top of, of and, and depending on what restaurants you go to, you know, it might be shredded cheese that's been melted under a broiler. 
for the the cheese fries or it could be like a cheese sauce that you dip your french fries into or that's poured over over the the french fries but that's not what poutine is that's not what the che the cheese curds don't melt like that they're in the gravy they're warm they're soft they're springy but they don't melt like that at least i've never ever had poutine where it has melted like that. Like you could dip your french fry into it and have gravy and cheese. It doesn't work like that. Like you're using a fork, you're you're scooping up a french fry on your fork and then you're scooping up a little cheese curd on on your fork because it doesn't melt like that. At least I've never experienced any severe melting of the cheese curds. Hello, Trinity. Anne Marie says that she's from Montreal, Quebec. Uh, I don't know how we got on this subject. I don't know how at all, but we're here now. I miss good cheese curds. I used to get them often when I lived in the Twin Cities. I haven't had cheese curds in forever. I don't even remember the last time that I had them, to be honest with you. The sausage gravy over mashies. Mm. I don't know about over mashies. I'm sure it would be good. Quite sure it would be. The yummy yummy. Doesn't poutine also have meat, pork belly or something? I, mine has never had, I don't know, my, I've never had poutine that's had a meat in it. No one knows how we got into most of the things we discussed. That's true. That's very true. 15 minute warning. My goodness. Where have our time, where has our time gone? Kathy Breyer had cheese curds last week. Oh, you lucky dog. I've never tried sausage gravy. Put it on my list. Oh, sausage gravy is glorious. I love sausage gravy. I did my own ask yourself why moment on Fiberific's live stream last week. Oh no, what did you do? What did you do? And since you were over at Chantel's, did she show you the babies that she got? <laughs> Freaky said, shoot, Kim, when? I missed it, me too. I'm always missing Chantel's live nowadays, unfortunately. You'll have to watch the replay, fine, fine. But that cam is so small. <laughs> oh. Literally picked up the mic and whispered, ask yourself why, into it. Oh, okay. Listen, sometimes it has to happen. Sometimes you, you, you just have to remind people. If you're upset, ask yourself why. Laughing cow cheese doesn't melt either. No? Oh, yeah. Okay. ASMR Kim. <laughs> That's one of Kim's favorite things.
sausage gravy on biscuits is the best. We also have cream dried beef on toast. Yes. I grew up on that. And you know, I have not had that since I was a child, the second one. I have not had that since I was a child because my mother loved it. And she was obsessed with it. And I hated it. I hated it when I was a child. And I don't know if I would still hate it. But I just know that my mom made it all the time. And I had to eat it. And I did not enjoy it as a child. So I have never eaten it as an adult because I did not enjoy it that much as a child. I haven't even given it a second thought. I was mad. <laughs> My mom, when I was younger, they, um, I think it was Lean Cuisine. I think that's who it was. Lean Cuisine had SOS in a bag. And I remember being so incredibly sad every time I would see that pot of water go on to, because back then it wasn't microwave food. <laughs> You had to boil the bags in the water on the stove. Do you guys remember that? I would get so depressed when I saw my mother reaching for that because I just disliked it so much. You know, I don't think that Sally just said biscuits to us is sweet, so that sounds so wrong. I um I do get what you're saying because what we call a cookie is what you guys call a biscuit and um a lot of people say that scones are the equivalent to what our biscuits are but I disagree because scones are a lot drier than what our biscuits are My youngest one loves goulash, but my big one is over it now. I'm not a fan of goulash either. I'm not. As a child, we didn't have gravy on biscuits or cream dried beef because dad had it all the time in the army. Oh, Kathy, you lucked out. Stouffer's. Maybe it was Stouffer's instead of Lean Cuisine. I think your biscuits are like scones. Yes, but, but the things... Um, scones are a lot drier than our biscuits. A whole lot drier. In my opinion, all of the scones... 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 That, that I've ever had. They were a lot drier. What's the difference between biscuits and cookies? Well, it depends on who you're asking and what part of the world that they're from. The Aussies and people from the UK, a lot of European countries, New Zealand folks, they call cookies biscuits. What we here in the US call a cookie, they call it a biscuit. Beef, potato, carrot, mushroom, tomato paste, and the packet mix from the supermarket. Huh. Scones shouldn't be dry unless you've done them wrong. Well, then all of the scones that I've ever had in my life have been dry. Every single time. I mean, some of them are, are have, have been really good, but they're a lot drier than what our biscuits are. I've had some scones that have had like dried cranberries in them and um, like rosemary. And I, I've had some 
wonderful stones. And when I say dry, I don't say that in a bad way. I'm just saying that they are drier than what our biscuits are here. My Aunt Jean Ann said the only way I like dried beef is in Nanny's cheese ball. Oh, Nanny's cheese ball was so wonderful. That actually sounds good. My mom's goulash is basically a can of spaghetti sauce mixed with noodles and put in the oven. See, that's what I'm saying. When I was growing up, my mama's goulash was elbow macaroni. And she it, it was kind of like spaghetti, only with elbow macaroni. And I don't know why I didn't like it. Because I love spaghetti. But I could not stand goulash. But that was my mom's goulash was a jar of spaghetti sauce, elbow noodles, and ground beef is what goulash was in our house. I don't know what damper is. I have no idea what damper is. When you make goulash, you have to cackle like a witch over the pot. <laughs> oh. That's still going straight. Yep, that's still going straight. That's okay. <sighs> oh yeah, and ground beef in the goulash. Yeah, yeah. No brown ground beef. We use cube steak. Yeah, your goulash is completely different from ours. Hamburger, elbow noodles, tomato juice, chili powder, and a quarter cup of sugar to cut... A quarter cup? Have mercy! Ground beef, red sauce, elbow mac, red and green peppers, and onion. Yeah, that sounds pretty close. Ugh. Ugh. Ground beef is hard to cook. It's only cow's lame. Freaky. Freaky, freaky, freaky. You guys, it is almost time to go. So I have to remind you one more time before we go. The gnomes. Look at the gnomes. Look at the spirit fingers. You see the spirit fingers? Spirit fingers all over the place. Look at the gnomes. The gnomes. Pip and Poppycock, if you were not here, Pip and Poppycock released her first ebook today and um, you can go to pipandpoppycock.com it's for sale on Lovecraft's website it's also for sale on Etsy it is eight different patterns for the low low price of four dollars and 99 cents this is clover and um bamble bumble Bumble, why do I keep saying that word wrong? Clover and Bramble. I keep wanting to say Bumble, but it's not. It's Clover and Bramble. And there are four different girl patterns, four different boy patterns separated out through the seasons. It is absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, lots and lots of information, 25 full pages. And of course, you know, you always have all of the, the help of the Pippin Crochet Club whenever you're working any type of Pippin pattern. So if you run into a tight spot, somebody's going to be able there. Somebody's going to be able to help you with that over there, okay? You guys, go get your ebook. Go get your ebook because because Emma is awesome and she's my BFF and it is beautiful. It really, really, really is beautiful. If you have not joined the It's Crochet O'Clock Facebook group, I don't know what you're waiting for. The shenanigans continue there all weekend long. Um, and um, what else was I going to say? Aside from the patrons, thank you so much, patrons. I love you. 
all so much. I will see all of you that are behind the scenes and above again on Sunday. We will also be live on the Good Loops Facebook page, me and Jen, tomorrow morning. For me, it's 11 a.m., but for everybody else and for consistency's sake, 1 p.m. Eastern Time over on the Good Loops Facebook page. Then we have the patrons on Sunday, Zoom meeting. Let's see. I think that's about it. My brain is fried. I'm hungry. Spread kindness, yes. Please remember to spread kindness. I am going to go eat dinner because we've been talking about food now for, for at least an hour. It feels like the entire two hours we spent talking about the food. Ugh, my Auntie Nan is saying goodbye. I love you very much, Auntie Nan. I will talk to you tomorrow. And everybody else, I love you guys too. Really, truly, I do. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it very, very, very much. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're doing, but hit the subscribe button. Bye-bye now.